I'm, I'm thinking a lot about customer journey optimizations currently with the projects we do as well. And you just mentioned before uh, uh, you want to dive into revenue management in that context as well. But uh, for me, it's always interesting to, to learn that outside of the industry perspective, mm -hmm. right? Because we can take so much away from retail, right? Yeah. Because like Amazon, how they treat us, uh, how they idealize the customer journey and convert, it's just amazing. Even for if you first glimpse, if you look on the interface, it really looks, what did you say before? Bad. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, pretty, it's pretty simple. It's, pretty yeah, it's very simple. Well, well, no, you said another word. Uh, Booking.com, same for me. Like from a user interface point of view and design point of view, it's a disaster, mm. but it works, it converts, right? Yeah, yeah. And we can take away the same from airlines, from your background as well, customer journeys. So given that, uh, what pain points do you see still in the industry when it comes to customer journeys and what's the solution in that context? Uh, so the ex experience with Allegiant Air, who um, in the US, well, th their their piece was that they don't distribute out, right? So they own all their own distribution, mm -hmm. uh, but they also fly on, un they fly from underserved markets to focus cities. So they're a vacation airline, and and unlike Europe, which has a lot of point to point mm -hmm. travel, you can you can kind of fly kind of almost anywhere. The US, in general, with the major airlines, were still hubbing through centers. So if you right. live in uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan, you've got to go to Detroit or Chicago to fly anywhere interesting. Right. Not, whereas they, Allegiant would move in there and go, well, all right, we can take you to three cities in Florida, we can take you to Vegas. And yeah. no one, and they got no competition on 80% of the routes. So there's, that helps, it's unlike, unlike hotels where you're kind of stuck yeah. physically. Yeah. Um, they go where there, where there was you know, demand. Um, they distribute everything themselves so they can, you know, they, they have no sort of commissions going after GDSs. Um, but also some of the stuff they were doing was, you, and you see this quite commonly with low cost carriers is they unbundle the fare. Um, and so that you're choosing, you know, so they see it as a matter of choice mm -hmm. so that you can pay as much as you need to, to travel. But it's also a way of, you know, um, separating the tax out of it. Cause there's in the U S particular, there's a, there's a federal, um, um, charge for the that airfare is, yeah. so you're at your so your um, airfare if you make that as cheap as possible and then you're putting things into bags and seats and, and, and other things so they're yeah. looking for that continual upsell so we're looking at EasyJet this morning or yesterday same thing Ryanair like you just got all this um, stuff thrown at you that that sort of um, a, a little bit obfuscated to make you feel like you have to buy it you know so so things like um, if you were to put it in a hotel context mm -hmm. um, Allegiant sees themselves, and for a period, you know, they, they're sort of evolving now, but there was a group of people there who, from an airline um, op operational and finance point of view and technology point of view, who have moved on to other places now. And I got to work with them while they were growing the, the airline significantly. Um, but they saw themselves as a technology company that flew aircraft. So if they look at their 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 booking engine they own all their own inventory they sell there's all their no no one to distribute through so they'll they look at uh, air air ancillary and third party yeah um <clears throat> there's all sorts of ways they want to upsell some of it's bad user journey some of it you as a as a you know the, from the technology team you're receiving these requests and you're going why is this this is terrible but mm -hmm. it makes them it's profitable um but there was things there like from just looking at the, on the hotel side of things was like well if you look at it hotel compared to what they value which is air air ancillary and um third party the air ancillary stuff was stuff that you you know yes you still get a seat on a plane if you bought your airfare but the air ancillary was stuff if you really want your own seat if you want to choose your own um you know add bags how many bags you want to bring i mean there's still government regulation that you have to be able to take personal item on board but like ca cabin baggage and, and other stuff so they slice it up enough so that some customers think that it's you know, nickel and diming people, but others think that they can fly, you know, around the US for 40 bucks to Vegas is pretty good rather than spending thousands, right? Or hundreds, um, yeah. but thousands if you're coming from say Canada, right? So, so they would um, <clears throat> set up an airport just on the other side of the border and then fly people in, you know, to, they could drive their car for an hour and they'd fly to Vegas or Florida, significantly cheaper than an, than an international effort. So that's the, if you look at that from the hotel side of things, yeah. from, from the hotel revenue management side of things, my look at that was things like, okay, they show you things in the air ancillary piece that are things that you optionally buy into that sound great. And they, so for example, when you see a seat map, 
they have a 60% take rate, so that or higher. So people, so people always think that they have to, you know, they say, don't, you don't want a middle seat, we've got to buy this. Mm -hmm. So they always buy buying, and that's not taxed to the same amount as the airfare. That's why it's unbundled. And that's why they sort of um, quite maturely, uh, as from a marketing point of view, get you to buy that, ex that seat or the extra leg room and these things you don't get. So you apply that to a hotel, maybe it's, I'm six foot four, Maybe, and I don't like, I wouldn't sleep in a twin bed because it's four inches shorter than a king bed. But maybe if I saw a hotel room map, I would, and there was a floor that only had uh, king beds in it, but mm -hmm. they were 50 bucks more a night. And I, or, am I sleeping in a twin? Yes, I could, right? But I'd, I'd choose the, the king bed because I, will get the four inches longer, it's 84 inches or whatever it is. So basically like a, within the booking engine experience, if you could then already pre-select the room, which you want to have. The room type, a room type that, that's, that's, that's geared, around, yeah. uh, geared around that type of experience. Yeah. Like it could be that you you know, you know need the extra. So it's all about influencing you like, you know, like yeah. you, do, you don't want to sit in the middle. Well, in, 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 a, in a hotel context, it'd be, well, I need a, I need a longer bed. Yeah, or do you, you know, I have to have, 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 have one. Quite a room to affect your size. And that's the other side. It could be that you, you know, hotels at the moment, they allow you to, you know, if you've allowed four people in the room, exactly. what are you doing? Why would you have two beds? You want to sell two rooms, yeah. right? At, full, at as much as you can get out of it. Mm. So why would I ever fit a room out with two beds, yeah. right? two, two queens? Uh, or, or allow um, a child under 14, a minor, to, uh, to be there with a trundle bed, a, a, a rollout. But maybe um, if you're older than that, you have to, you know, you pay. And some some properties do do that, right? But yeah. uh, but what I mean is, from the the low cost carrier point of view, they're always trying to find a way where it it makes sense for you to buy that extra thing. But then on the other side, and make the entry point as well yeah, easier yeah. at the same time. Because right? you're getting you're you're, got, you're starting with a fare like it's like eight bucks, and yeah. all of a sudden you've spent. You know, 300 through 200 yeah. 300 mm -hmm. and they've done that to you because it's your choice at, at all, all times but it's like it makes sense like there's there's some interesting stuff there that they get into in the airline space with the seat maps which mm. probably is not not known but they do seat masking so as a family of three i've booked through another u.s carrier and i guarantee i can't find i won't be allocated seats three together my son's five so for me to look on the seat map and see and get three seats together i gotta pay yeah. But they use masking to, again, influence you to choose. I have to choose that one. So there's stuff there that's happening that is quite mature as far as how to get you to pay by increments and should only show you the big price right at the end when you're about to pay and check out. Mm -hmm. So there's stuff that they're doing that is interesting. And then, like I said, these are things that are ancillary. I don't actually need them, but I, I choose to buy them. Mm -hmm. When you look at the resort fee question and, and like San Francisco is, doing, is getting the resort fees, Vegas sort of led the way with the resort fees. It's to, it's to do with the fact that they can, the resort fee, um, uh, might, uh, the hotel stays charged up with the, you know, the local, um, yeah, like a city tax, city tax and that sort of things. Whereas the resort fee will be taxed at sales tax. Mm. So it's a lot, it's less. So in the San Francisco context, one's 15%, one's 8.75 or whatever mm. it is. So why pay more tax out to the, to the, the local government? Um, but they call it a resort fee. And the things that are in there, things that you kind of now expect to be standard, right? So the low cost carriers will do things like a, a passenger usage charge and put it right next to the government taxes. Mm -hmm. So you have these things which look like it's just, oh, that's just a government fee. That's, you know, so they associated that with, that's a compulsory charge from the government, even mm -hmm. though it's not. Mm -hmm. um, Whereas from a, in a rather sneaky, oh, it, yeah, yeah, rather than the hotel space, it was like a resort fee. What the hell? Why, why am I paying for towels and Wi-Fi? Right, like that should be part of my stay. They go to pool and I need internet. Like it's a standard thing. So if you were to look at changing, change the name. Don't use resort fee. Right, and and, and put it right next to the government charges rather than right next to your you know what what's actually required you to stay choosing a yeah. room and, and other things. Yeah. So there's stuff like that that I find that they that when I'm, when we start getting into discussions like this, like well yeah, low cost carriers have this knack of really focusing on that that upsell, sometimes through trickery in the booking path, 
But other times it's, it's, it's to really just, you know, um, from a revenue point of view, they're hiding things in plain sight as well. Mm. Well, it's not really just the low cost carriers. I mean, the big ones do it too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, 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 they're all yeah. 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 We could talk for ages, but before we finish up, I would like to get from the both of you a little bit about what you're doing with Trafotech. What's your um, direction with, with, with Trafotech? I know you want to try to do more with startups and work with the startup scene in Vegas. Um, so maybe differentiate for us what's the difference yeah. between Testbeds Vegas mm. and Travotech mm. and what your plans are. Yeah, yeah. sure. Well, well, yeah, Testbed Vegas was something that Shane and I kicked off through the recognition that Las Vegas as a destination doesn't really have um, a big technology scene around travel and hospitality. And, because, and given that it's one of the, well, not one, it, it's the largest consolidated travel destination in the world. And we're both working there in technology and we're thinking, well, why is this not a place where people are building technology for the industry? Because that's what Las Vegas does, mm. right? Mm. So that, that was the foundation of that. And, and our energy there is really about trying to establish that industry. Culture. Yeah. Well, beyond culture, but, but industry in Las Vegas for right. all the reasons, not, not just purely from industry, but state you know incentives and living and, and demographic reasons for being in las vegas so yeah, you know, we kicked that off with the, with the intent of turning it into a hub for industry right um which is great for industry because las vegas is probably the only place in the world that is entirely focused on the business of travel hospitality and entertainment mm -hmm more than 50% of the GDP of the city comes from the industry. Yeah, of course. More than half a million people are working directly in that space. So, yeah, we just think it's a natural progression and that's what we're trying to achieve. And it's there. a non-for-profit organization, yes. right? Yeah. Right. yeah. Okay, so then we trans transition to Travotech. What's the difference? Hmm. Well, that's a for-profit business. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty much what I figured. <laughs> no, so, so, you know, I mean, Travotech is really about leveraging, you know, career experience. So, it's a it's a vendor facing organisation and it's a and it's a, an operator facing organisation right. because we've both been on both sides of um, mm. industry um, and, it, and it ranges from you know helping people get a, a software product established and built um, mm. to you know looking in, to enter a new market whether it be onshore or offshore because Shane and I have both uh, worked around the world as well so you know what the reason we're in Europe at the moment mm. is to meet European companies who ultimately will eventually have an inter interest in coming to into a massive yep. you yeah. know, hospitality technology market. And to also perhaps better understand that market yeah, right. because given yeah. the, gee, obviously markets are different and some companies don't transition sure. well with that. So that no, well, they, and, and they are different, you know. And, and then of course, the, you know, from a sort of domestic operation of Travotech is for a, a North American based companies stepping out. Yeah. Of North America yeah. um, into you know, the other places we've worked being Asia and Europe. So mm -hmm. um, right. yeah. and that, that's the crux of it. And then you know, there's a stack of things that we can do in that space given sort of the, the, the breadth of our backgrounds that we've had. So it could be, you know, it could be mentoring technology leaders, it could be you know, advising them strategically, it could be helping with market entry, it could be digital transformation for you know, operators in the space, um, you know, or, or asset optimization uh, programs for hotel operators who, you know, are not extracting the full value of the technology they have. Yeah. Okay, um, so yeah, it's quite quite a broad quite a broad platform yeah. that, that you know leverages that that okay. background. And so my only, my two cents on it is that both companies, in, uh, regardless of what their, their their overall purpose is, is it's a vehicle for me. Um, to partly say motivated in the, in this space is that, you know, finding passionate people, uh, because generally the best, some of the best people I've met around travel and hospitality are all very passionate. They're very interested in, in the fact that their technology enables, um, you know, this industry enables these travel experiences, guest experiences, right? So, and when you keep, when you keep, when you've come across and find people who are switched on, who are passionate about what technology can do to enable it, that's the people that I like to meet. So, mm. so regardless of which business, 
we're out there trying, you know, coming across people, mm. visiting Cologne, meeting people with very similar mindsets with mm. why we get together and talk and really drive this stuff. Because at the end of the day, it creates for me this, um, even if it's a, a boring back end system, it's actually enabling someone's family to have a vacation, create memories or a business to, you know, succeed. This, this is what travel and, and, uh, and, 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 and hospitality is, brings to the, to the world, right? Yeah. So it's a positive contribution to the, yeah. to the planet. I think you know, going back to one of the very early points that you made um, you know, about adoption at the end of the day, I think what we recognise you know, from our background, you, because we're both motivated by that and we've both sort of been in industry, and I, I would call myself a hotelier first and a, a technologist second because I still feel very, very strongly about that. Um, you know, for me, that's always been the point of technology. Technology is really, I mean, my, my, view, my view is it's about competitive advantage. And if you can't get some competitive advantage from technology, maybe you shouldn't be doing it. But mm. in our industry, you know, the opportunity, going back to what you had said earlier, Daniel, is, is well, and, and some around the marketplace discussion is, well, you know, people aren't used to trying that, aren't used to venturing. The window of opportunity in our industry, um, you know, I usually say 10 years if you're an early adopter of a piece of technology, but in actual fact, in some cases, it's 20. Yeah. 20 years of being able to do something because of a tool that your competition can't do, uh, which is an extraordinary opportunity in any business. And that really is you know, one of the things that we want to try to help people do is be brave and take on the technology for the, the opportunities that it brings to your business and the big step forward that it gives you. Yeah. Um, it takes a bit of courage. Yeah. But in today's world, technology truly is so, so much more robust than, than when we all got started in it and so much more stable. And it's not, it doesn't have the risks in it that it used to have. Well, I think, I think people would be braver to make, to have that courage, if you like, to make that change once they understand more the landscape. It's about, and it all comes back to why, why we started Tech Talk Travel. It's all about creating that, that understanding, that, that knowledge sharing, that educational piece so that it gives operators, yeah. hoteliers, the, the, the confidence to be, to be able to understand the conversation when they're sitting in front of technologists or vendors. But it, it, it enables them with yeah. the ability to ask the right questions and, and the poignant questions and to know when perhaps they may be having the wool pulled over their eyes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because that's happened a lot in the past and, and, and that's something that has annoyed me very much and another reason why we started Tech Talk because mm -hmm. it has to be very transparent. There has to be transparency there. In yeah. order for us to succeed as an industry when it comes to technology anyway, for people to understand each other on either side of the fence, there has to be transparency. Mm -hmm. As soon as you put walls up, you're going to have problems. No, it's yeah. true. But, you know, I mean, it's, it, it, it's funny having seen so much technology come into industry. Um, and we have a lot of technology. You know, a lot of people say, oh, there's no technology. That's not mm. true. Yeah, we have a, a, a wealth Absolutely. of great technology in this industry. Oh, and, 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 you know, the, but, but if you're not willing to take it on and if you're not willing to put it into the business, well, you know, sure, mm -hmm. it's easy to sit back and, and lament about what, what could and should be. But mm -hmm. the truth is that if, if you, you know, and, and, and it, it is a strategic approach. It must be a strategic approach that the, the, the shotgun approach to technology adoption is mm -hmm. not the way to go. And, you know, people talk about strategy and it's, a, it's an easy throwaway, li throwaway line, but mm -hmm. these are assets and really? It, it really does require a very, very well-based and thoughtful approach mm -hmm. to what you're doing and where you're going, not because of technology, but because of what you're trying to achieve in your business. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, certainly having executed on that in, in my career, it makes a massive difference with where you start from and how things yeah. end up in yeah. the end. Yeah. And I hope with conversations like this, it makes it more accessible for technologists to understand the industry more, who are going to come up with solutions because mm -hmm. Uh, we kind of mentioned before, there's a lot of the real problems that need to be solved are generally people who've, you know, so people who are solving them in a great way have come from a hospitality background. They've gone to a hotel school, they've, or they've got a, mm -hmm. uh, a background in tourism, right? They've, um, 
where where sometimes you get you're getting uh, new technologies come in that are you know they more, more, more. they have they have they have not had that experience. So yeah. an example may be um, you know we something we came across in the in the housekeeping space and they were talking about different digital devices. There's a lot of wearables around now. So well, have you stopped and thought that a housekeeper's job is not to be looking or, you know, and they're using their hands for a living mm. um it's maybe it's not a wearable on their wrist maybe it's somewhere else maybe it's not a wearable at all uh, because understanding time and motion and what they do as a job is is different and the fact that that that, that um that techno you know, that technologist or that technology company might not have understood that you know uh, because they haven't had the exposure to it right yeah. so there's things there that i, I find that that it's, it's, it's got to be two it's got to be two ways it's like getting the hoteliers to giving them accessibility to understand but getting more technologists to understand the industry yeah exactly and like i said because i stayed at a hotel and i thought i and i thought i knew how to create a, create a hotel product yeah. and it's not yeah. true because it's just staying in a hotel yeah. you tend towards coming up with guest experience or venue discovery and that type of thing whereas the real problems are back office yeah. Well, you know, I, I think the other thing too, which, which fascinates me, and I, I used to, you know, something that I used to, you know, talk with my teams about when when I was on the on the on the operator side, is that eighty percent of the technology in our industry is used by the operation, and yet most of what we hear about is all the customer facing technology, which I've always found that fascinating. Because I think that's that, shifting, Marco, yeah. to be honest. I think I hope yeah, so. 80% yeah. was perhaps the case, but now I think it's um, it's more meeting in the middle when you can mm. when you consider how uh, the booker, for example, the guest is um, already having the experience with a hotel well before they've arrived. And that's, that experience is delivered through the technology. Mm. Um, and then of course the property experience and then the after experience. So you're, you're right, there's a huge uh, component of the on-property from the, 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 the associates or the staff's perspective, but I think uh, there is a shift there. Yeah, no, I, yeah, don't, I, 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 don't, no, I don't disagree with that. And I think one of the things that, um, yeah, I was just having this discussion yesterday with, with some other industry peers and, and yeah, it, it is, it, it, it's a very interesting shift in our industry, watching the guests have so much more to do with creating everything that needs to be done. Mm. And as an industry, we don't actually have to do quite as much operationally anymore. Mm. You know, you think about reservations, right? Or updating registration cards. Well, well now they've given you all that information before they've checked in, which changes a lot of things from a, you know, an operational process perspective. Absolutely. Yeah. There's um, some great technologies out there doing that. Yeah, let's, let's wrap it up. Yeah, let's wrap it up. Gentlemen, yeah. great to have you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Jess. Um, Cheers, man. Always oh, great to see you. Well. Now we have to um, <laughs> uh, go for lunch and then we'll probably end up in a uh, pub somewhere. Which will be, well, it's Friday night, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you did, make sure you hit the bell button. Subscribe, hit the bell button for your notifications. And until next time, it's bye for now. Thanks.